week we talked about grief into purpose. And this week we're going to talk about the struggles of a startup into becoming a pillar of purpose, right? And the discovery of purpose as it propels us to move forward. And since it's being recorded, we're going to jump into our formalities. And today we're going to do an introduction, an icebreaker. Then you're going to learn a little bit more about our guest speaker. And we'll do a semi-structured interview. And then the last 15 minutes, I want you all to starting as soon as you have this inkling of curiosity, drop your questions in the chat. Um, and then during our Q&A at the last 15 minutes, we'll um, open up the floor so you all can talk with our guests. And afterwards, as you all know, this is also a faith-based space. Um, we will be praying to close out. Um, but welcome to everyone that is tuning in today or tuning in whatever day you're tuning in. Um, just for right now, since we want to make sure that we're knowing where everyone's at, James, Rachelle, and I also have uh, Diane, just place in the chat so I can make sure, one, my chat is working, where you're logging in from today, uh, so that we can know that we're a little bit closer than we feel. Um, geographically, um, I'll place my location currently is Winter Springs, Florida. Winter Springs, Florida. Uh, for those that know, I am a Florida boy. Um, for 31 years of my life, out of the 37, I lived in Florida, so I'm extremely excited for that opportunity. And for those that, it seems like everyone here is from locations that I've seen before. Uh, my guest is from Miami, Florida. You'll learn a little bit more about that. Diane, oh, Diane, this Dallas, Texas. Okay. Uh, Danielle, Los Angeles, Maryland. Arizona, near Sedona. Oh, I actually don't know where Mayor is at at, at all. Okay. Um, Goshen, Indiana. Kathy, I, I feel a little closer to you already. When I went to Southwest Michigan, I was a family consultant, and I had to travel all of Indiana. I mean, from South Bend, Indiana to uh, Kokomo, Indiana. It was crazy. I learned. I had to. I basically had a quick learning curve. So, um, and I also preached in a couple of areas like near Goshen, um, Angola, Indiana. And it's just, it's cool to see someone from that area. So thanks for sharing. Um, I'm from Northwest Indians, Indians, uh, Munster. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Well, we get to know a little bit about each other. Hopefully as we do this icebreaker, I'm going to ask you all to join in it. But before we get to that, let's do some formalities. So we know our chat is working and no one here actually seems new to circles, but um, I just want to welcome you to circles. And you will know this as you go to our Spotify link that circles their, their sole purpose. While it's actually, uh, uh, I want to say a minute municipal bit of what all the interdisciplinary team does. But if you look at the mission, it's the world to basically rid the world of loneliness, right? The epidemic of loneliness and connect each other to our stories and people that share similar life struggles. And so to date, um, I know we've placed over 150K on uh, of individuals that we've been able to interact and help on this Circles app. Um, and I would encourage you to share more with others as well because they can get on-demand help 24 seven small audio rooms. You all know it's led by some moderators. Um, I believe it's the biggest interdisciplinary team that I've ever been a part of which means that some are peer led, some are professionally led by mental health experts, but you it's basically your value meal. You get what you want, right? Um, and for those that are listening, there will be also a link. Welcome, Kelly. Um, I see this is your first time in this space. Welcome home. Um, there will be a link for those listening. There will be a recording link that will be available later. Um, if you go to our Spotify page, you will see all the conversations we had. We just had a, conver a dynamic conversation with Jeff, our uh, masterclass host. Um, which was his final master class, and he talks about embracing destiny. But today, we're going to introduce you to one of my close colleagues, Emmanuel St. Jean. She will be highlighting some of her achievements and her role as a beacon of resilience and innovation in the entrepreneur role, but it doesn't come without its own difficulties, right? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to quickly ask you to just Join me, tickle my fancies, you all. You know, I like to just let the person know that we see them, we hear them, give them flowers early at the very beginning. The guest speaker for today's masterclass is attorney Emanuela St. Jean. Uh, she's a dear friend of mine. So if you all can just heart on the screen so that way we can know that our heart is working, the emojis, 
Um, Emanuela, we see you. Man, I get a privilege of sharing with you all what I've gotten a, a, a sense to and just a glimmer of her building her own uh, firm from the ground up. She's a brilliant attorney, a savvy businesswoman, a tireless advocate for entrepreneurs. But in this masterclass, Emanuela will share her personal journey, you all, from the side of what we understand, like the side hustle. If anyone knows that this grind beyond the nine to five, the sleepless nights, um, where these sleepless nights turn to dreams realized, she will talk about that side hustle to a successful business owner, but she'll also be discussing the challenges, you all, because this room is specifically about, this masterclass is about journeying from the startup struggles to the pillar protection, which she started, and, and she's now endeavoring to share more with the world. So all the challenges that she's faced along the way, the lessons that she's learned, and some of the strategies to achieve success. Um, and just a little bit more about her. So, Manuela, I know you're a little shy at times about this, but I, I, I'm going to take all the time to introduce people to a person that I love dearly. She's a proud daughter um, of Little Haiti, South Florida. Emanuela's zeal for justice and community service was kindled in the corridors of Turner Tech High School. She's blazed the trail all the way to Florida State University, although she made a poor, uh, poor decision there. I'm a graduate of Florida Agricultural Mechanical University. Um, but Nevertheless, she she survived the rigors of the studies in criminal justice. And I also recently learned this. Is, I think this is why we connect a lot. Um, also, social work. Um, as you all know, I'm a social worker and also I studied Masters of Divinity Theology. Um, she's a beacon of leadership and faith. And I know this specifically because we were co-directors in uh, campus ministries in Tallahassee, Florida. So we were able to forge the relationship, this invaluable friendship that we have now, which also She's graciously um, in the past, in 2018, June 17 of 2018, she stood by my side as a groomswoman in my wedding. Um, so following her heart and this unwavering commitment to this aspect of le legal advocacy, Emanuela conquered the academic rigors of also John Marshall Law School in Atlanta. After a well-deserved academic hiatus of a year, um, her education was more than a pursuit of knowledge. It became the building block for her mission or, and her purpose to empower, protect, and serve. So today, Emanuela is an esteemed founder and driving force behind Pillar Protection. So you can look at look at look it up online um, through Instagram on social media and at Pillar Protection, um, and where she is the ally for entrepreneurs. If you're if you're someone that is endeavoring, considering, thinking about, or in the midst in the valley and thinking about balancing the nine to five, the kids, the co-parenting, the co-petting, um, or creators of life, she's someone that you need to listen to. Her firm stands not only just as a business, but it's a vanguard for dreams, assets, and hard-earned success. Now, here's the disclaimer. Welcome, KD, that I need to put out there, and Sandra and James and Yara. Um, as we settle into what promises, in my opinion, um, and you all don't have to join ever again if this is not an enlightened conversation. Um, I, I'm going to put my stake and my claim or my own reputation on this. This is a crucial conversation to acknowledge the wisdom that Emanuela has, that she's going to share with you. And it comes today from not from the statutes of law, but from the trials and triumphs of her own life experiences. So her narrative is not legal counsel. I want to make this very clear for everyone, but rather it's a testament to what we can achieve when resilience stands as a cornerstone of our venture. So without further ado, I present to you all a stalwart protector of entrepreneur endeavors, a cherished friend, an inspiration to us all, my colleague, attorney Emanuela St. Jean. How you doing, Emanuela? I'm I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, but I just want to be clear, like that bio was beautiful. Are you sure you have the right person? Like I <laughs> want to be a hundred percent clear that you meant to have me on tonight. Listen, listen, I'm telling you right now, I I actually I have a longer bio, by the way. <laughs> and so this, <laughs> this is this is just a short version. And I, I don't think I can um I don't we we you know Creole is our native tongue in English as well, but I don't think language is sufficient enough for me to say um, how kind you are, how great of a person you are. And I just want to say this publicly to you, um, get your tears ready because um, there's going to be some times that 
Manuel might cry, but it, I will also say this to you all. She knows I'm a pre and procrastinator. So I felt led by the Holy Spirit and I asked her last minute and she, without hesitation, well, actually with hesitation and without hesitation, she said yes. Um, so Emanuela, I want them to get to know you a little bit more and join in the fun, right? Because she's also someone that loves fun as a pillar of her process. So everyone here knows that I like to do this game. Um, you have to answer, which is this or that. And it's a simple, I'm going to give you like two options and you just have to pick one. Okay, Emanuela? Okay. Does that sound good? good? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. And I'll, I'll frame it for you. And But this is actually also going to lay the groundwork for our conversation today, you all. So in the chat, if you want to participate, go ahead um, and participate in the chat. But the first one is centered around, and it's going to be a little tough one to start off with, Emanuela, because I know you're a tough cookie. Let me ask you this question. Okay. Would you rather debut a perfect product but zero customers or launch a flawed product that attracts a massive customer base? Which one? Ooh, okay, that's tough. Um, how do you define flawed? Um, is it flawed enough where a customer might get a customer might get hurt and I'm getting sued, or flawed like the color is is wrong? I need, yes. I need, <laughs> um, <laughs> I need a. I'm just not trying to get sued. Um, okay. No, no, no. But, let's say both. Let's say both. <laughs> mm, um. Okay. You know what? I think seeking perfection has like kept me stuck, but mm. depending on like the level of flaw, I might just, you know, push the product out and then, you know, perfect it as I get, you know, go along. Mm. Oh, I like that. So um, I love you. You've already pulled out and hopefully you all are deriving some values, right? This can be relational. It can be based in the business world. It can be based on your spiritual life. Sometimes being perfect can get you stuck. Right. But what I'm also hearing from you, part of your values and, and it's a clear rule for establishing a strong foundation is actually just putting it out there. Right. Um, could you share a real life scenario from your journey that reflects this where you were you were probably questioning, oh, it's not perfect. It's not there yet. But you got the courage to just put it out there. Um, yes, just um, just starting my firm. Um, so I'm a first generation American, first generation lawyer, um, first generation entrepreneur. So I have, I had, I had no idea um, about business. So, um, so I have this idea to, you know, start a firm, but um, so law, law school teaches you how to be a lawyer, but law school doesn't teach you how to run a business. And mm. um, running a law firm, there are so many um, rules and implications. Um, you know, you can't leave money in one account too long. It has to go into the other account. Or um, there's so many rules of professional conduct, of ethics. Um, so just getting started um i was trying to check all these things off of off of a box and um you know apart from the the things that are necessary and you know um necessary by the bar um you know there were some other things that um you know that wasn't required but i was just trying to check a million things off of a list um and that kind of just kept me stuck almost like paralyzed um where i didn't even want to launch and um and I was just, you know, seeking perfection, even down to the logo, down to um, my contract. So that's that's how um, perfection has like kept me um, stuck from from starting, um, mm. from launching. Wow, wow! And, and you talk about, and I love your logo, by the way. Um, and let let's let's talk about managing pillar protection, and and let's talk about it in the sense of because you're pulling out a lot of your clear principles and rules um, and to ensure that you were consistent and also you had stability. So let me ask you this question. And this is, then we'll go into a little fun question, but I'm trying to build on just us understanding what your foundations are. It's what your pillars are, no pun intended, but did you <laughs> prioritize establishing clear principles and rules or did you find more strength and adaptability, especially in the face of unforeseen like challenges on your entrepreneur endeavors? So like, were you saying, okay, I'm gonna start and create these rules. This is what we're gonna live by and breathe by. Or did you actually 
in this rapid changing world, figure out, okay, I find more strength in adapting based on the challenges. So um, I started off with the rules. Like I had my, and I still have like my own, I call it my, my pillar protection Bible. Um, but I think um, because of the line of the work that I'm in, you know, the law changes, my customers needs change, technology changes. I think it forced me into um, adaptability. Um, so I think now I'm more towards being um, adaptable, being able to pivot um, in, in different circumstances. So I think adaptability. Mm. Yeah, and I love what you're saying. So it's also based on the need, right? To because mm -hmm. sometimes we can be too rigid and it make may make it difficult for us to adapt and survive, right? Um, so I love what you're saying. And I know you like to laugh. So let me sit. I I'll, I'll, I'll transition real quick to a lighter note. Um, when it comes to your preferred work environment, are you more productive in the midst of an energetic buzz of a shoppy uh coffee shop or do you prefer to be enveloped in like the serene silence of the library? Uh, give me the library. Like I need silence. I have, <laughs> I have more than enough distractions library any day. <laughs> okay. I like it. So you definitely need that, that calm, peaceful environment to actually produce and have this uh, aspect of where you can work and where you can think. So that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. So I'll stop here because I know that there's, I wanted to only spend time like five minutes in this, but let's quickly transition into more of a shared experience because the story that you, you're going to share in all forms, I think it'll allow us to connect. You all know I've talked about backstories and let me check the chat real quick. Um, Katie says in the chat, she needs silence too. She feels the same. And Kathy said in regards to the prior question that she, she would actually strive for the perfect item. And I know many of us find that um, uh, uh, whether it's relationships or even on the aspect of our, our entrepreneurial endeavors, I recall Kathy one time and, and, and Emma, I remember Oda, my wife, um, she wanted to start this blog, uh, Emma, and I kid you not, she was done with everything. She, she crafted everything. It was perfect. She had to get the right picture of her because she was like, this is the first time I'm putting myself out there. She, and for those that don't know, she's very... Uh, she's a minimalist she she's very private and but for weeks she could not hit the send button because she said it wasn't perfect hmm. and i was like isn't that just like us right um we tend to withhold something that could be beneficial to the world but we think we need to put something perfect out there right um so emmanuel let, let us let us and thank you again for joining us today because i know your journey is a testament to resilience transformation. And it's actually something that I believe has a profound impact on it is your spiritual guidance. And, and so after we have done with this initial icebreaker, I want to remind you of something that has had a profound impact on me. And it's Krista Tippett's On Being podcast. There's a question that she poses um, that I think helps us to surface this discussion and bring it more on a spiritual upbringing. And she uses that for her guest. So Emma or Emanuela, excuse me, so I call her Emma, uh, uh, Emanuela, reflecting on your diverse and transformative journey, could you share with us how your spiritual upbringings, particularly in your childhood, shaped the person or entrepreneur you are today? Hmm, um, I, I, I pause because that's... Um, it's 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 who I it's 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 who I am. So I grew up um, I grew up Chris, Christian. I still am am Christian. But um, I shared earlier that I am a first generation. I'm Haitian American and I'm a first generation American. Um, but my my story starts long before um, you know even like uh, being being born. So my my mother arrived to this country illegally um, back in you know the eighties. They were there were, there were, I don't, I don't know how they were getting people into this country, but uh, my mother arrived Ill illegal. And um, one of the things that she, you know, you come to this country, you have to work. So one of the things that she did do was she was, she was working at farms and, you know, picking vegetables and fruits, um, you know, during the various seasons. And that's how she would, you know, make income for her to live. And she did that for a while until, um, 
until like my dad came into the country. And um, during that time, it, I think it was called INS or Im immigration, they would do raids at this farm because they knew that people were um, illegal. And um, so they would heavily target this farm. But every day my mom went to work hoping that she would not, you know, have to, you know, go to jail and, you know, re have to return back to um, Haiti, who would, which was going through such a turmoil then. Um, but every day, but when my mother shared those stories with us, it's, um, you know, the consistent thing has been, you know, her faith has um, brought her through that when she left home, like she left home praying and understanding that God will bring her back home that she knew that she could not go back to Haiti um, and that God will s sustain her. Um, and I think um, seeing, and my mother kept that, kept that spirit um, until the day that, you know, she passed, that God will sustain her. And I would watch my mom every single day, get up early um, to, um, you know, go to work. And eventually she did become, you know, um, citizen and, you know, get legal status. But um, what was consistent in her life every single day was um, getting up before before the the sun was up and just praying. And I think that beha the, the behavior that she modeled um, definitely left an imprint on me. Um, whereas when I go through various um, challenges, I'm reminded of the stories of my mom who um, who persists, um, who you know tells me, "Listen, against all hope, hope." You know, you you show up and you do what you have to do and trust that God will um, do the rest. And I think that has that stays with me. Um, and I, I take that on in in work and in my business. Yeah, well, you just shifted. Oh, my goodness. Emanuela, you just shifted this space. And I, I want to just say thank you for it. And I appreciate your pause. Right. Um, it shows the weight and the heaviness of the question, but the beauty that exists behind just the glimpse that you gave us in your childhood. Um, and I wrote what you said in the chat um, against all hope, hope, such a powerful and pristine reminder for us all. Um, and I know the audience is eager to hear more about your um, entrepreneur journey. So um, after you share some of these talking points um, based on the question that we have, we'll open it up to you all. Um, for questions or testimonies, if there's anything that you resonated with. Um, you all are already recognizing why I love Emanuela um, and her journey, especially through some of the difficulties and challenges that you just mentioned. Um, now, can, can you share, and welcome, Rachel, can you share for us an instance where a significant struggle led, to, for, led you to clarify your purpose, especially in, in your entrepreneurial journey? Mm hmm. Um, so when I when I went to law school, I knew that I was going to be a prosecutor, um, even in high school, like I was in the criminal justice program. Um, and I knew that part of like my goal was to like I want to be able to um, deliver justice for all people, regardless of, you know, who the victim is and what they've done and um, or who the defendant is. I, I know that like, my my purpose involves um, just rendering justice. Um, so a, a struggle for me was, um, and, and also, um, I, I guess um, part of my, my purpose as well too is, um, I always said that I was going to take care of like, you know, my parents. Um, mm -hmm. I was always going to, you know, when I get this law degree, like I was going to, you know, have all this money and make sure that, you know, my parents are good because, you know, they struggled, struggled for so long. Um, and part of that, that journey, um, you know, between 2016 and 2020, I, I lost my mother. I lost my sister and I lost my father. Um, so my purpose for me, like, I thought my purpose was gone. Like, I, I was like, what am I working for? Like everything that I worked for was for them because I had a plan to, um, you know, liberate them from their troubles and from, you know, the things that they experienced. Um, so now that this is gone, um, now that they were gone, part of like my identity is gone and part of my purpose is gone. So I'm like, well, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Like, who am I if, you know, these people aren't, um, you know, aren't here. 
And I, and even during that, um, even during those losses, um, God continued to grant me clarity and um, grant me a clearer vision of my purpose. Um, one of the things that I was clear, what that I was cleared about is that my life is not my own, that I'm merely a vessel to be used by God. However, wherever he fits, yes, the losses are tough. They're not easy. I still cry sometimes to this day. Um, it's, it's not easy, but what I'm clear is that um, I am, I am, I am mere, mere dust that God blew his breath in me. And um, I've, I've laid down, like I've laid down my life and I'm just like, God, whatever it is that you want to do, like do it. Um, I think that was like those things became clear to me during those losses. And also during those, um, during those losses, what was clear is that, um, you know, this grief, this loss didn't happen just for me. I remember during the bar exam, um, taking the bar exam, there was a girl crying in the bathroom and she had just lost her mother as well. Um, and I had, I was a, a few months away from, um, from my loss too, but I was able to encourage her through that. Um, and also what was birthed through that pain and through, um, and my purpose being even more clarified was, um, you know, after you lose um, someone, there's so much um, legal implications involved. Um, you know, my parents didn't have wills, they didn't have trust and all these things going on. And I just knew that I didn't want someone else to experience what I experienced. So that's why I added, um, in addition to business estate planning, it's um, how do I prevent another child from, you know, from the mess that, you know, my family and I had to go through? How do I prevent, you know, oh, you know death isn't easy. It's not the easiest time, but um, I know that having an estate plan can make this process so much easier. Um, and that's why I build myself to um, people in my community. Um, Cause I know, you know, everyone says having a will is important. Having a trust is important, but no one gets it done. Um, so um, those things was, were, clear, were clear to me that um, this is the um, avenue, one of the avenues that I need to um, follow through on and make sure that um, people um, have access to this, know about this. Um, so yeah, that's um, so that's one struggle that led to um, my purpose being clarified. Thank you for sharing, Emanuela. Um, and I just I fall in love with you all so much more when you when I hear your story because I can tell you all that, um, and and I share this with all honesty um, with you all. I recall going to. And this might be activating. I'm getting chills as I think about it. Um, Emma, I recall um, getting the invitation to go to your graduation and getting to take pictures. And I recall this uh, young lady. I, I believe if I recall pr properly, Emma, not only was I there to support you, but you were getting awarded for like a, a pro bono award um, for your advocacy and pro bono. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm over here proud. If anybody knows me, uh, KD, Beth, Hope, Kathy, Rachel, James, um, Emma knows, uh, and Diane and Danielle, I'm a clown. I'm a clown. So part of my my pillar of faith, I just recognized recently, um, Emanuela, is that I've lost sight of the fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in that moment, there was something that wasn't funny, but it was something that actually left an indelible impression upon me. I watched this astute, um, confident young lady walk down the aisle. You all know as after the graduates are um, called out, they have to walk down the aisle to, uh, and that's why they call it a commencement because like it's 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 the end, but it's actually the beginning, right? And there was this profound um, guest speaker, but I I looked and I, I'm out here shouting, I'm acting a clown, and I know she is. And if, if you act a clown, Emma's going to act like she don't know you, right? But this time, yeah, it varies. <laughs> but I noticed she was looking for someone in the crowd, right? And in and, and that moment, Emma, it was like, you're looking for the people that you expected to be there, but they're no longer there because they passed, right? And my heart was, I, I remember when God told me that, I'm over here like saying, Emma, 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 if you hear the recording, I'm still doing it during that time. 
but it, it was in that moment where I first learned how to embrace the 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 duality where a strong believer can have community but still feel alone, can experience the heights of their journey but still recognize it felt like for what, right? And it was in that moment I I felt the most connected to you um, because I recall during my graduation, although I didn't experience your loss, there was a person that I was looking for in the crowd, but they weren't there, Mm -hmm. right? And so I I definitely tell you, thank you for allowing me to journey with you. And and it was from that moment I knew that I didn't want you to feel alone, but I, I also recognize outside of that moment, sometimes, and I'm still curating the language for that, we don't know what to say to a person, right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, but as you shared your journey, there was a profound moment that you shared with me that outside of all you've gone through actually helped me on my journey. So I want to share this with the group and, and actually to expound upon it a little bit, you were part of a law firm and you said that, um, I think at this point in time that the presiding attorneys were calling everyone in and they called the person that you thought was the most secure in the law firm in, and they let her go. And while you were working in this law firm, it changed your mindset, leading you to assert that you never put your security in someone else's hand, hands, excuse me. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, how did that impact your journey as an entrepreneur? Um, that, that moment made, made so many things like clear for me. So, um, j- so during a firm, um, when you're at a firm, mm-hmm. they do end of year reviews, the partners, um, they look at, you know, how many hours you build, like the work that you've done, the clients that you mm-hmm. bring in. So just, they look at everything, a performance review, and they determine whether or not you're getting a bonus or, you know, what's, what's next for you. And someone who they actually put me under to learn, um, you know, she had her performance review and, Um, Within seconds of her walking out of the room, her office was cleared. Like, while she's doing the review, they send another team to clear her office, clear the things off of her desk, and she was escorted out of the office. She didn't even have a a moment to get her bag. And I was just like, like, you can't treat people like this. And for me, um, I knew that, you know, you know, even though I had my review and they said, you know, hey, you're doing great or whatever. Um. I, I, for me, it was like, if you can do it to her, you can definitely do it to me. Like there's, there's no exceptions. Like, of course you have to perform, um, but that moment just made it clear that um, you can't leave like your future in the hands of someone else. Um, and, and I just knew that, you know, yes, like I, you know, I still have other aspirations that, you know, that may require me to um, work for someone else at, at some point, but um, it's, um it's you have to have you know that that safety net that safety basket I mean, I think entrepreneurship provides so much freedom um for people um and and I'll and I'll be um completely transparent like right now I I work for a government agency um so the type of work that I do I can't do it in private in a private sector like I have to work for a government um agency to do this work um but but still, um, I still have my business because I can't leave, like, you know, my destiny, my future in the hands of someone else. And especially since, um, you know, be, you know, because I you know, lost my parents, there's like there's no fallback plan. Like there is no plan B. It's uh, it's just me and Jesus at this point. Um, so <laughs> that's why it's especially important um, for me. And I definitely preach the message of, you know, have something for yourself. Um, you know, sure. There's nothing wrong with the nine to five, absolutely nothing. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a 100% up. Oh, I think someone's calling through. Did I miss it? There we go. For, for me. There we go. It looks like someone's calling through, and I apologize. You said you you were one hundred percent clear that. Can you finish that statement? Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I said that situation made it one hundred percent clear to me that um, that I need to you know continue on with my business, and that I need to continue, uh, um, um, you know, letting entrepreneurs know that this is this is freedom. Like this provides you freedom mm. to do what it is that you need to do. Um, so yeah. 
And, and I and I also, while you were talking, it's interesting, your purpose, although it was clear then, I think that even the language that you're saying here, and I wrote it in the chat, um, you can't leave your future in the hands of someone else. And I it, I immediately like went to my um, um, AC, the advanced care planning training, right? Um, and like the directives, like that's so why it's so important. They one of the things they suggested they were like if you if you can drive, you need a wheel, right? Um, and and so it's so interesting the correlation of what you're saying, especially with our background and our in our culture and our community. Sometimes people think, well, um, I don't have anything to leave to un- anyone besides liabilities, right? And so they're like, why well, plan for it, right? And mm-hmm. and but the reality is. While we all have challenges, there are things that you can provide directives of in how your 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 body is cared for, what type of funeral proceedings that you want, how you want to derive your your the end of your life, right? Yeah. Um, and have those things in writing. It doesn't mean that everything will go according to plan, but at least you're not leaving your future in someone else's hands. So I love that insight, and thank you for sharing. I know we're going to be wrapping up here, so so we can actually start asking questions. But I do have. Um, like two more. One is going to be more about because j- just diving a little bit into the challenges of entrepreneurship. And you're talking about juggling, having that balance of the, the knowing that the nine to five, but still having something for yourself. So how have the challenges that you faced in entrepreneurship shaped your approach to decision making and risk taking? I, I think what it I think what it's done is um, I'm able to make better decisions or I'm able to take risks um, because there is a plan. Um, I know there's a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs that I talk to. Um, they're they're part of what I called quit your job ministries. Like someone puts an Instagram reel that says, you know, I just quit my job today and I made a million dollars tomorrow. And it's like, OK, um, you know, you know, I have like, you know, I've had a couple of entrepreneurs come to me and it's like I quit my job. And it's like. I'm going to make a million dollars. And I'm like, okay, so what's the plan? And it's like, they, they don't have one. And I'm like, huh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, we need to go back to the drawing board. So I think um, having a plan um, makes me a better, um, it allows me to um, take risk. It gives me the freedom to do what it is that I, um, that I need to do. So, yeah. I love that. And KD also agrees in the chat uh, in regards to that, um, having a plan. And again, it's I don't know if you planned on doing this, but it makes so much sense to now the pillar protection, like the aspect of like having a plan, um, not putting your your life in someone else's hand um, and also ha- having this estate planning. Right. It comes down to even and it's so funny you talk about uh, what did you call the type of ministry again? Quit your job in the streets. I love it. That's the worst I heard of it. I was about to be part of that crew, girl, but uh, thank, <laughs> thank God he, he knocked some sense into me. Um, now, as you reflect on your journey so far, um, you talked about um, one struggle, right? Um, but overall, and we're we're and I, I do journey mapping as an evaluator, so we look at like inflection points, you know. Um, and so, but looking at your course of your journey, I was going to ask you to how has it reshaped your perspective of entrepreneurship? But I think you've answered it. Um, but how has the challenges and the struggle changed who and where you have conversations with people? Can you can you ask that question again? Yeah. So, um, like, you know, for example, you talked about this aspect of like, for example, with your work that you currently do. Right. It's afforded you opportunity to do something that you can't do in your current um, aspect of your entrepreneur endeavors. So there's certain conversations you can have at certain places. And even how we started at the top of this, like, you know, sometimes you always got to give a disclaimer. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not legal advice. Right. Yeah. Um, so knowing that your journey has had struggles. Right. Um, it could be communication. It could be like uh, the plans or having to adapt. How has that reshaped or or how has that um, changed who and where you have conversations with people about entrepreneurship? 
uh, knowing what um, I've been through and um, and listening to um, my clients and they share, you know, their their issues or their their pain points um, and having an understanding of like because entrepreneurship is hard. It's hard. It's not for everybody. Um, and it's and it's tough. Um, so I think um, what knowing all this information, um, it's allowed me to, you know, just have these conversations with like with with anyone um, like I, I'm not in the business of just um, when people come to me and they, you know, hey, I have this issue when like I'm just not in the business of just like selling products like sure, like I can, you know, sell you a I can, you know, I can bill you for, um, you know, a trademark or I can bill you for an estate plan or trust. Like, um, like, I don't want to be like that kind of lawyer. Like there's, there's plenty of money and there's money to be had. Um, but I'm, I'm all about, um, educating people. So I think like, I will freely have a conversation with people because I want consumers and I want people to um, be informed and I want them to be able to make educated decisions for themselves. Um, I, I, I'll, like all of my clients, like I give them so many resources, like so much information, like anything I have, like it's coming out either in a plan or in a plan of, of, of action or, you know, during our um, consultations because I just so I'll I'll talk to anyone in, in any space um, but I just want to give people information to uh, make informed decisions because I've seen people enter into bad contracts bad business deals or you know not have certain things in place for their business um, so understanding people's customers pain points um, it gives me that it, it empowers me to even speak more freely to different people because I don't want the protective part of me. I'm not even a mother yet, but like just the, the protective and nurturing part of me. Um, like I just want to make sure that people are informed and I want to make sure that people are empowered before, you know, they um, get into certain other business, business deals or, or even engage in business with me or anyone else. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I love the fact that it's like this informed decision making, right? It still builds. It's, I, I don't know how you're doing this, but it's still building on this concept of pillar protection, like having a plan, not putting your life in someone else's hand. And you all listen, you've gotten a, a glimpse of this personal journey from side hustler to successful business owner. She, she shared some of the challenges you all. Um, she shared uh, some of the lessons learned, right? She shared even her grief journey as well, right? Um, and, and some of the strategies, you heard some of the strategies so you can achieve success. Like you don't have to leave your nine to five. You also need to understand what is for you and what is not for you, right? Um, have a conversation, right? Um, and, and even have a communication plan. So um, for me, Emanuela's story is one of inspiration to anyone who's ever dreamed of starting their own business, right? And I think it's a living testament, right? It's a living testament to the power of hard work, in my opinion. Um, or, or if I were to use something else like determination and perseverance, because there's so many opportunities to give up, right. Um, in life, there's so many opportunities, but we don't talk about that. Um, but there's also an opportunity to give a person a chance to speak. Right. And you talked about pain points. So as we transition and we'll open up the floor to questions for everyone. And, and like you said, you, you want people to make informed decisions and, and the context of, uh, what you shared here today. Um, I want, um, Emmanuel, if you're okay for us to, any questions related to your journey specifically or experiences that people may have, um, I would like for us to facilitate a session of questions in our last 15 minutes together. And then if it's okay, if you would be comfortable answering them, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Um, and I forgot to give this caveat, which I always do. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I um, I want to be clear that um, everything that I said today or will continue to say is for educational purposes and that, mm -hmm. you know, the views reflected are not that of my employer, that they're my own. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, an attorney-client relationship has not started. I got so excited and just jumped in and I forgot to give that disclaimer. But um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to um, answer any questions. Um, and if I can't, I, I will find the resource and I'll get it to Denard and I'm sure he will get it to you. Yes. Actually, we do have a group afterwards, a uh, support group where we share everything um, in regards to content as well. And I also put um, the Instagram link there for those that are looking for it as well. So um, raise your hand if you have a question for Emanuela. You've heard her journey. You've heard her recap how she got started. You've heard how her pain point actually birthed this purpose. 
Um, you've heard some of the struggles in between working in a law firm and watching someone who she's an understudy for um, lose it all and not even have a chance to pack it up, right? Um, and and how that actually left an impression on her. So um, I'll pay attention to if anyone has any questions, um, just raise your hand and we'll start from that perspective. And if you're listening, um, I would love for you later on, if you have any questions, just to reach out to at Pillow Protection, if you have questions and we can follow up from there. Um, James, we see James. Welcome to the floor. What questions do you have? So in regarding um, setting up your own business, uh, when it comes to um, your LLC and your EIN and um, doing your taxes, would you recommend, uh, what would you recommend as far as uh, getting help with your uh, business taxes? So I am not a tax professional, so that's exactly who I'm going to refer you to. Um, see in a CACPA, you know, go see an accounting and they can um, look at your books, look at your numbers and um, figure out what's the best, you know, tax plan for you. Um, just in terms of an attorney, um, I would say you just make sure you keep all your receipts, keep all of your records so that when you go to your tax professional, you know, they'll have an easier job figuring out what's the best, you know, tax plan for you and your business okay i love that i love that question uh james and it, it can be sometimes not know where to start right um but you're doing it right now starting with just having a question and i can tell you all as evidence of it uh, my wife had to wanted to start the endeavor but we didn't know where to start and it was kind of just like the same thing afterwards it's you know trying to figure out as a contractor you know, what to do with taxes, you know, you have turbo tax and all these things, but it's also important to make sure that you're not just making a decision, you're making the right decision, right? Um, so research, educate, and informed decision making is always key. Um, I do see Danielle's hand, Emma. Um, Danielle, what would you like to ask? Yes, thank you so much for coming on here and talking about this. Um, you know, how did you, how did you determine, like, that you were going to do law before even practicing because it's such a huge investment in time and in money. And, you know, like you, you, you don't know if you're going to be good at it before you even start. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm, I just applied for my graduate school to go into practice afterwards, um, not in law, but in something else. And I'm like, man, this is such a huge leap of faith to, to think like, how is this going to be? So how did you, how did you overcome that? Or how did you know? That's, that's a great question. So um, when I was a kid, um, I have, I have, I have like what, five, six siblings. I, I lose count. Sorry. Um, so when I was a kid and like my siblings would get into trouble, um, I would always like run to their defense. Like, like before my mom, you know, gave them a whooping or my dad disciplined them. Like I would always jump to like their defense. And, um, so, you know, my siblings were in trouble and I rent and I wasn't there actually. And then my mom, she said something in Creole. She said, um, which translates to um, where's the attorney without pay um, um, so she was like um, where are you um, so I you know I, I didn't even know what happened but I just you know pled in defense of like my siblings so my mom wouldn't you know come down on them and I think from that moment she kind of both of my parents just nurtured that nurtured my advocate I was I guess I was advocating even before I knew what it was um, and in just, and also like just being in like continuous prayer, um, like it was like, for me, like God made it clear, like, this is what you you're going to be doing. And this is, um, what I'm going to, this is what my, uh, my purpose was, um, is going, this is part of like my purpose. So like, once that became clear in my mind, it didn't matter what the obstacles or, or challenges were. It didn't matter what my GPA looked like. It didn't matter what my LSAT scores were. It didn't matter if I didn't have a letter of recommendation. It didn't matter if I failed the bar exam. Like it didn't matter if I failed the LSAT or had to retake it. Um, what I knew for sure is that this is the promise that God made to me and it has to come to pass. Like all of his promises are yes and amen in um, it's just a matter, um, for me, like all of these promises are sure, 
So all that needs to happen is just time needs to catch up to the promises that he already has made. Um, so knowing that and knowing that, hey, this guy has my back, then I can do it. Like I stand in like that confidence that God has me. Um, and that's what um, made me go forward and, um, you know, and, and, and do this. And you see the heart from Danielle, you're already uh, motivating us in a certain direction and I'm excited. And I love what you said. I hope you all are noticing the boldness in her faith. Um, um, and something she would always say her mom would share was, um, Miley said to like tighten your waist, you know, the road, the road is not meant to um, be easy, but the reality is, um, what, what I love is that God, and I shared this before Emma with everyone. If you look biblically, everyone, that God's promise comes before the problem, comes before the trial, comes before the, the, the triumph as well, right? And so I love the surety that you've shared here. And I hope that someone else, you may be questioning where you're at. Welcome, Val. Welcome, Mona. Um, you may have questions about even right now, right, in your mind. But a highest, the highest cer certainty is knowing that we don't need to question that God has a promise for our life, right, and a purpose. So thank you for reminding us of that, Emma. Um, okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? I think I saw Crystal or Mona were un unmuting. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Let me see. Okay, if... I'm sorry, did you say I unmuted? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw you unmute, but if you didn't, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and... Oh, wow. Uh, I know that's activating, um, Emma. Um, and let me say this. Uh, I have a question for you, Emma. Sure. Um, as we're wrapping up here. <clears throat> I know, I know, I know you said you're not married yet, but I know you got, I know you got a little love life somewhere <laughs> going on. <laughs> so here's the you question. You're in my business. Like, <laughs> you're in my business. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I think it's important though, because like sometimes I was just talking to one of my mentees. He's like a um, TEDx fellow, Obama fellow, all these things, and he's finding himself like challenging uh, the word balance. Right, try to balance the demands of business, right? Um, with his personal life. So, and especially love life. So how do you balance? And I just, I'll frame it around personal life and not specifically love life, but how do you balance the demands with your a business with your personal life? Um, it's tough. It's, it's very tough, but um, you have to set boundaries. Um, for, for me, it's um, for me, I'm I, I observe the Sabbath, which means that um, from sundown Friday to Saturday sunset, um, I rest like I don't do any work, um, business work. I don't um, you know, I don't I don't do anything. I, I just rest and I just connect with my, my creator during that time. So that's a um, so just setting boundaries in place has really helped um has helped every area of my life. So uh, certain days, maybe I don't, you know, engage with clients or um, so that I can focus, you know, and, and certain days, you know, I'll engage with clients between, you know, you know, certain hours or, you know, friends putting a time limit on that. Um, it's just for me, I have to um, stick to my schedule. I have to set um, hard boundaries with families, with friends, um, because, you um, because I have to make sure that I'm okay. Um, because the world will take everything from you. Like the world, people, friends, work, they will take everything from you. Like I, I like I saw like a coworker die of a brain aneurysm and um, her job was posted like that same day. Um, so it's just like, no one cares. No one's gonna care about you the way you do. So I have to set, um, boundaries for the things that I want to do for the things that I'm called to do and then everything else is just secondary so um that's that's how I balance or juggle things um, boundaries are 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 strong for me I love that I love that um boundaries routine and also recognizing that I need to care for myself right and somebody said and we'll go to one last question in the chat 
and I'll read it out loud, but one person, one of the members said in one of our groups, um, um, she said that we need to get greedy with our healing, right? And so it's essential when you create those boundaries and the routine, it sounds good. You can have a plan in place, right? And part of this, this aspect of having informed decision-making and having a plan, but if you don't enforce your plan, if you don't enforce your boundaries, you might as well have not had one in the first place. So I love what you're saying here. And um, and thank you all for hanging in. We're about to wrap up here. I'm going to pose this last question from KD in the chat, Emma, to you. Um, when your parents passed in death, which you described as your why, what did you put to practice, including any spiritual practices to keep yourself motivated to stay focused on your goals? Entrepreneurship can be demanding. How, how did you stay on course? Oh, this is a good one. Oh, that's a good one. And that's going to take time for me to answer. Um, but very, um, a couple of things that I did. Um, one, therapy. Um, I know people say it. Like, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't. I was like, okay, yeah, therapy. Um, but um, therapy, I, I saw the help um, of a licensed professional. Um, music, um, finding and uh, creative outlet. Because I realized that oh I didn't I didn't have any um creativity like I didn't have any ways to express um how I felt um and um lots of prayers and um lots of really good friends who will help you pull you out of dark spaces um so those are those are a couple of things that helped me um get through um that tough time Thank you. Thank you so much, Emma. And thank you all, um, Emma. And I, I know you're we're concluding, but uh, as we move towards the end of this enlightening session, um, and it's clear that, like you said, entrepreneurship, while it's challenging, it's also rewarding, right? Um, like moments like these, we get to, um, I don't know if I could pay you enough for what you just shared. Actually, I won't pay you at all. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as we conclude, uh, could you share like one piece of advice or insight you would like to leave um, our audience with? Um, yes. Um, and it's something that I can't do for you. It's something that someone, no one else can do for you. Um, you know, a lot of you guys have brilliant ideas. Um, you guys know how you want to do things. Um, and a lot of things that I've found with um, entrepreneurs is that there's a limiting belief. Um, a lot of people don't believe that they could could achieve that the goals and the dreams that they set down. Um, and I know this has been said, but like you have to believe in yourself, believe in that your God given abilities, believe um, in your talents, believe that whatever um, vision that you write down, that it can happen for you um, and that you are talented and that you are bold and that um, most importantly, that you are in answered prayer, that there is a problem out there that only you have the solution for um, and that God needs you to get it done. So that's, that's what I would say to an entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, I forgot to tell you all, she's a preacher too. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord has not called me to that. The Lord has not called me to the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> no, I, Emma, I love you. I am grateful that you've allowed me to walk alongside you. You've walked alongside our family. I'm grateful that you were able to share um, your valuable insights with everyone here and reminding us that we are answered prayer and as we wrap up here, I think that's the best way to end is with prayer. Um, and um, is there any like upcoming things that you have, like where events, workshops um, or and I'll drop the social media handle in here as well that you would like to keep us abreast of? No, not at this time. But um, anything that I have um, going on is will, will be posted on my um, business page at Pillar Protection on Instagram. Hey, okay. Pillar protection. So Emma, I didn't actually, I didn't, I know I didn't, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you to do this. Um, but I just, uh, you know how people would pass the buck by saying, I feel led. Mm, oh, the Holy you, Spirit you, has touched me. 
He did not. He did not lead you. He did not lead you. <laughs> don't don't pass it to me. No, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but I just want to remind everyone to stay connected um, and and in prayer and continue supporting each other because as 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 we are answered prayers to the needs that are out there there's also a need that we have, which is community, right? Um, and in this communal aspect of prayer, um, before we do this, I want to just give um, Emma again a shout out, if you all can heart with me, just to say an in, uh, informal way, thank you, just heart on the screen. Emma, I just want to um, praise you and bless you for what God is doing, is doing in and through you in this moment. Um, and as we go into prayer, I just want to remind you all that just like Emma said, um, one of my favorite leadership principles in the Bible is John 14, verse 12. Um, if you don't believe in yourself, God does, right? Um, Jesus literally says, the verily, verily, the works I do, you will do also. But he actually says, greater than these you shall do. So God wants to not just you to answer to what the call, but he says, I'm going to allow you to do even greater than I did. And I have faith in you, right? So let's practice this moment of faith through prayer in the community. And whether you're questioning Danielle, whether anyone right now is, is kind of in this place of valley vacillating, I hope this prayer can actually help to remind you that God has faith in you. And all he's asking you to do is to respond according to that faith, right? And let us pray. All minds and hearts are clear. Um, I believe in mindfulness, so I'll ask you all just to find the color that's to the left of you. Just grab hold of it. Grab hold of it. Pay attention to the temperature in the room. On the count of three, let's take in a deep breath. Breath that God has given us. Uh, one, two, three. Breathe in through your nostrils. Uh, and release that tension. Let us pray. Um, God, I am in love with you. It is without question that you saw fit to place us here at this moment and this time and this way for this purpose today so that we can hear from you, not just Emma, not just Emmanuel, not just Attorney St. Jean, not just a young lady who had to walk and traverse the tumultuous waters of grief, God, and share her perspective of entrepreneurship, but she clearly showed that you have kept her. And God, as we journey through pain and purpose, God, God, we reiterate right now, we need you more than ever. We need you to guide our thoughts, our depths, our family members, our friends, our enemies, and help us to be deeply in tune with what you have for us to do in this world. Remove the distractions and remind us in this moment, above all, that not only do you have faith in us, but these two things will remain true and pass the test of time that you love us and you care for us. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone, Amen. Emma, thank you again. Danielle, KD, Diane, Mona, James, Val, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Until next time, remember you can't get through what you're going through without you. And I'll see you here next week. Emma, I'll reach out to you. Bye, everyone. All right. Godspeed and God bless. Bye-bye.